Hi, happy Sabbath, everyone. Hello, my friends. Happy Sabbath to you all. Hello, happy Sabbath. Hello, Hi, Dilma. Hi, Dilma. Hi. Hello, dear Thais. friends. Thais nice to see coming. you. Uh, Hello, guys. Hello, Jonette, Thais, Lucy. Who else? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Thank happy you for Sabbath. your guys. Easy. <laughs> nice to see you. Long time. Long time see that you. you are. Hi. Heaven. Long talked. time. Yes. How about your week, my friends? A busy week. Uh, fresh week, a cold week, like we have dealing in Brazil. <laughs> uh, I'd say, I'd cold say, week. cool, cool week. Cool, cool, yeah. cold, cold, cold is cool. <laughs> Hello, Maria. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Hello, Thiago. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Hello. I think that I Hello, Maria. connecting the drama. Everything's well. well. Uh, for me, everything is fine. As long as, as we have the Lord by our sides and you in our meeting, everything is all right in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Go let's yeah. let's wait a, a little. More Hello, Adriana. Happy Sabbath. Hi, Adriana. Hi. Hello. Happy Sabbath. Happy Don't Sabbath. be shy. Open up your camera and show. <laughs> Qualquer dia. Uh, okay. Anytime. Anytime soon. <laughs> well, let's well, see. Thais is still connecting. Rodrigo is entering. So Maria, tell us how, how is uh, is going your your recovering process of about your feet? Oh well, uh, your foot. I I'm mean. A, I'm well. I'm walking. Wow! Uh, thank God. Which are which are closed 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 shoes, but uh, I'm uh, driving. And uh, I'm well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, this week, uh, completely three months since I broke. broke oh, it. three months. Three, three months. months. So yes. you are a real overcomer. You're a really well. <laughs> That's very good. The first month was terrible, but the other, I the second imagine. and the third was better. I can imagine. So who else? Pastor Douglas, welcome to our Vespers meeting. Rodrigo as well. Hello. Hi, hello. Happy Sabbath. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello people. Hello, hello, Rodrigo. Hi, Rodrigo. Hi. Hello. I'm street now. Happy Saturday. <laughs> happy Sabbath. Ah, happy, happy Sabbath, Rodrigo. Badu is the same. Way as you in mm -hmm. the car, but you are in the street. Great. Uh, Badu chose to close his camera, not willing to show yeah. <laughs> his condition. <laughs> right, I, Jim. I think that you can. We can start, and you can sure. share your your screen. So let us start. Um, let me start my screen, and that is. Okay, just give me one second. Oops, this one. Yes. So my friends, welcome to our Vespers uh, meeting. This is the English small group, Friday Vespers that we, we get together every Friday uh, by 6.30 p.m. Uh, Brasilia time or Sao Paulo time you choose, but in Brazil, the the, look, the, the reference of time is always here in Brasilia. <laughs> so welcome to this marvelous group. And um, we hope that you will uh, be blessed with the message and the songs that we are going to, to sing. 
and to of course we are starting this uh, new Bible series, Bible study series, by reviewing the heroes of faith. Our uh, whole have reference would going to be Hebrews uh, chapter 11, that we call in, uh, as some could call it as a, a gallery of uh, faith, hero, faith, heroes faith. And um, we're going to talk about more those special characters and their accounts uh, according to the Bible. Uh, and our first prayer is Oceano. I don't think that Oceano is, is, is in our meeting yet. Yes, he is. Ah, he is. Oceano, so yeah. the time is yours. I didn't see you, my friend. I'm so sorry for that. Welcome. <laughs> have a no problem. So the Let's time break. is yours. Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing. You have gave us during this week. We want to thank you for every protection that came from your kingdom. Now we are here just uh, to study this new chapter about the book of Hebrew, about the heroes of faith. We want to beg you that you come and hope in our mind that we can understand your word, that we can uh, live it according to your will. We know that uh, we are full, but you as God, we believe that you can lead us according to your will. Because of that, we want to thank you for every prayer request people send this group that the Holy Spirit can be with us can uh, lead us according to will. In Jesus' name, we believe and we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very Amen. much, Oceano, for the sharing the piece of prayer for us. Uh, this is, guys, if you want to be close to us, not just on Fridays, but every single day, uh, we have our WhatsApp group. We invite you to come. You can talk with us, uh, or you can do it by yourself by uh, pointing this... Um, your camera, smartphone camera to this QR code. But if you're willing to, if you're prefer, you can talk with Patricia, with Badu, with me, and um, or any, any of the of members of the group, and you'll be part. Please be part of us uh, and be in touch with us every day. We share the word of God, we share some songs, resources, so you can, you can uh, be close to us, not just on Friday, but every single time. Um, let us keep going. And if you have some prayer requests or Thanksgiving, this is the place that you can share it for, with us. You can do it by sharing on the chat, on the Zoom chat, or you can use our Padlet prayer, this uh, official uh, wall of stickers with uh, prayer requests and thanksgiving. You can uh, access it by pointing, just get your smartphone and close the, uh, come closer to the, with your camera open uh, and get access to this precious uh, resource. And if you're part of the group, time after time, we share the link so you can uh, access straight in the, uh, during the week anytime you want uh, to, the, to this resource, blessed resource. Many, many prayers uh, have been shared. Many have been uh, answered by God. And um, of course, we believe that all of them received the best answer from God according to his will. So don't forget it and share with us. Um, so the Bible verse for tonight, uh, we got it from Hebrews chapter 1, 11, verse 6. I would like to ask a volunteer to read for us this precious verse. And May I? Oh, May I? that's good. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him, must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. 
Amen. Amen. It's a powerful promise. It is impossible to please God without faith. But anyone who earnestly seek him will receive and seek him, believing that he exists, will receive uh, not just an answer, but his peace in, in his or her soul. So the first song that we have is uh, Faith Above, Above Fear. I would uh, remind you to mute your microphones while we're singing so you don't get the interference while we're singing. So that is sing. If you don't know it, it's time to learn. Oops. My bad, my bad, I'm sorry, my bad. We are not listening. I don't know. Uh, yes, we can listen the song. Okay, so let me stop the sharing, start it again. Okay, let's share start screen. Okay, let us start over. Can you listen? Yes. yes.
the church says. Hi guys. Amen. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think that's have problem with the, the slides of the song. Really? But I, well, I think that every, everyone listened okay the song. Okay, that's fine. Um, so my friend, uh, this is some of the prayer requests that we have. Uh, we have some of, some of us have the fear uh, about this pandemic of COVID-19, but um, we believe that God is more power than more powerful than any kind of disease or anything bad in this world. And um, some of the prayer requests that we have for this time uh, is, a, is uh, re re regarded with uh, related, I mean, with health concerns. Uh, Pastor Ronnie Diaz, Ro Robson, I'm sorry, Ronnie Diaz and Pastor Robson, Professor Lane, uh, Bashara's family, Sad Bashar and Najla's, also his wife, and um, others that receive the, the chair, his, their concerns regarding uh, about family, um, about ankle, we'll say, no, share about the loss of uh, an ankle. And uh, my friends, remember, keep, you can uh, share uh, your part of your time praying for those prayer requests and also being glad with those who are rejoicing the Lord for several reasons. Uh, and um, one of them, again, Oceano share about his daddy, he's doing well. Um, um, a, a cousin a pastor also, Pastor Mayran, here in Brasilia, he also got uh, his discharged, was discharged from the hospital and um, many others. If you have anything you want to, to share with us for spiritual support or for sharing your rejoice in the Lord, feel free to do with for us, uh, with us in this in our Padlet prayer. And uh, now it's time for the intercessory prayer. Um, I didn't see yet Susan in the group. I'm not sure if she's. In the I group. am right here. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, my all my. My uh, participants, it's quite all right. You're showing your screen, something? so it's oh. hard to see everyone. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much. Now the time is yours for the Thank you. Prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you so very much. Thank you for bringing us through another week and to another Sabbath day. We are so very, I should say, a Sabbath evening. We are so very grateful for everything that you are doing for us, have done for us, and will do for us. We want to lift up all the prayers of thanksgiving. We want to say thank you for the person who is now out of the hospital and home recovering. We want to say thank you for all of the family members that you have blessed. We want to say thank you for all of those who are here on the line. Please bless each and every person as well as each and every member of their family. We want to thank you for this small group, Vespers, which is such a blessing to each and every one of us. And dear Heavenly Father, we want to lift up all the prayer requests. We lift up those who have health challenges, those who are in the hospital those who are home recuperating, those who are looking for jobs, those who have jobs but aren't happy in the jobs they're in, those who are struggling financially. We especially lift up those who have lost loved ones. We know that it's not easy to lose a loved one, especially during this time of COVID. We, we lift up Oceano, who lost his uncle, who's very dear to him. And I believe I heard Jim say a cousin of his passed. We lift up those families to you, Lord. You are the one who can comfort them better than anyone else. You know exactly what to do for each and every member of each family who has lost a loved one. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to be with all of those who are struggling mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Help us, Lord. Help us to grow closer and closer to you. 
Time is getting short. We know Jesus is coming soon and we want to go home with you. Please forgive us for our sins. Help us to become more and more like Jesus with every passing day. And we ask all this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for this beautiful prayer. Amen. Uh, well, what a difference that uh, such a wonderful prayer can do in our lives. Thank you very much, Susan. Really appreciate that. Um, okay, let us move on. time for our wonderful guest keynote speaker Douglas, pastor douglas um shared the the message for us uh pastor douglas is pastor at um a new perspective community in canada and uh he's um also a minister has been served as a minister since uh 2003 and has devoted his time to people to ministry and is uh, and, and when he share the word of God in an exciting uh, way, it's like uh, where I preach the, with the, this kind of message that can, can inspire people. And his education, I'm reading according here, but his education uh, in background includes a bachelor in bachelor's degree in theology and business administration uh, administration. MBA in business and a master's degree in leadership. He has finished also a doctorate degree at a Fuller or Fuller Seminary in Pasadena, California. Uh, he's married to uh, Rebecca and they have one daughter, Oliver Rachel and a son, Christopher Pereira. So Pastor Douglas, be, be welcome to our group, to our meeting. The time is yours. Well, thank you so much and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Uh, for me, uh, it will take uh, another four hours to be Sabbath. However, it is good to enjoy a little bit already of the blessings coming from Brazil. And how are you doing, guys? Very well. Better now we are get it together here the word of god that you're going to present to us that's great uh would it be possible to stop sharing the screen so we can oh great thank you yep um a few weeks ago i think wellington uh reached out and asked me to share with you guys a short devotional about one of the heroes of faith right so let me ask is this the first session of yours Yes, yes, it is. Pastor. The first. Wow! So I'm the lucky one. So, <laughs> yes. Ah, that's great. That's great. Well, it is good to be with you and to study this lady. This lady that appears, do you know how many times the name Rahab appears in the Bible? Anyone knows? I have no idea. But I think that in Jesus' genealogy, I think this is the word, uh, she appears. I remember that. Yeah. So in total, we can find her name in the Bible 15 times. Wow. 12 times in the Old Testament and three times in the New Testament. Uh, it's interesting that in the Old Testament, only six times of 12 refer to this woman that we are studying today. Okay? Rahab. But there's another Rahab in the Old Testament that we see in the book of Job twice, 
Psalms twice and Isaiah twice. And the Rahab of these six appearance in the old, those three books of the Bible refer to a kind of a monster of the sea, a dragon. And it is related to um, a dragon of chaos, confusion, problem. And the book of Isaiah, he relates this dragon as the people and country of Egypt at Jesus or the biblical times. So of the 15, six is related to this dragon, right? That means chaos. And somehow I think her name, Hahab, can be related to chaos as well. Because, well, if my mother was choosing probably a future wife for myself, or if you had to choose someone to marry a friend, a sibling, or your son, maybe she will not be in the least. She will not make it. She didn't have a good reputation. And I want to turn and re re read uh, the, the, the Bible verse that basically is the foundation of this series, right? Usually we refer to Hebrews 11 as the gallery of faith, of the heroes of faith. And anyone would be willing to read for us Hebrews 11.31. Hebrews 11.31. May I? Yes. Okay. Hebrews 11.31. And this is from the King James Version. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Wow, she made it. And why she made it? Why is she in this gallery? What was special about her? And I wanna hear from you, okay? Uh, it's not a sermon. It's not a monologue. It is a conversation. She put her life on the line to hide the spies. And yeah. she believed in Jesus. She believed in God from the stories that she had heard before the spies even came. Thank you for sharing that, Susan. Uh, anybody else who'd like to add? Why she made it? Why she is in the least? Well, I think that she was um, empty as any other human uh, at that city. And um, for as much as she could heard about God um, by the testimony of the spies, she believed it and she accepted for some reason, because of maybe because of the empty of, of the way she was living. Um, and uh, for that little little pieces of the gospel, so to speak, uh, that she received, she thought, okay, I mean, what else I can do? And she chose to, to hide the, those spies. Mm. Powerful. She was great, 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 you know, sequence of great grandmother of David. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's Professor. True. That's true. Why she made it? We have heard at least three kind of answers. Anybody else want to share or any other perspectives or thoughts? She also did not have the fear that the rest of the, that her country had. 
they 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 were fearful of God because they knew about the Red Sea. They knew about the different things that God had done, the armies that were taken down by God. So she didn't have the fear that they had. Mm. Great insights, great insights. At least one more, one more. Let's go. You uh, want more? Go ahead, Professor. Uh, she made it because she hear about the God of Jews, what he did with another people. And now it is close to her. And she knew that the, the city will be destroyed. And I believe in the in the war that's come from the spies. Right? By faith. I, I, I think that she did it because she had a faith in the war that he she heard. Hmm. This is the point. That's good. Well, I appreciate all the insights. Oh, we have one more? Yes. Uh, she was a whore, and the Bible wants to say that nobody is hopeless. Mm. That's powerful. That's powerful. Uh, yeah, because she had a pure heart, although her life, but her heart was pure. Mm. And I think that that's the reason we cannot point the finger to anyone because you don't know what is going on inside the heart and the mind. And either that person could be living in a, not, not just the prostitutes, I mean the, the drug dealers, uh, crime, criminals, anyone, uh, those who accept bribes, uh, cor corrupted in po politics, but we don't really don't know what really is going on inside their lives, inside the hearts and minds. And maybe just for one message, one witnessing that we give to them, they change. Well, like just happened with Neha. Well, guys, I'm so pleased because there is wisdom in the multitude and coming together and talk about the word of God. And I have to agree with everything you have said. But I want to propose something a little bit different, just because I like to be different. Why she made it? The main reason that she made it was not because of her, but because of the God that we have. You see, what will make us to make that list one day? It's not about who you are or how, who you not are, you not are, but who God is. You see, we always focus on us, our faults, our shortcomings, our good things, our wisdom, our knowledge, our titles. But at the end of the day, it is all about who God is. So if she made it, was not because she was harlot or anything like that, but because of God. And we will make it because of God. I want to turn with you to the book of Matthew, where I do believe is the most important place that her name appears. And I think the way it is structured the way is placed, provide us a little bit more about who God is. Because the Bible is not about people, but about who God is. Matthew chapter one. So turn to your Bible, Matthew part, chapter one. We usually, when we go to those lists of genealogy, we usually skip. Who have skipped those lists? Hands, raise your hands. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm not the only senior here. <laughs> you guys. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I like history and I go back to the some genealogies, not, not, not all of them. 
but it's kind of boring, right? You got the book of numbers and that person married that person, gave that son that person and, and start that list and list of the soldiers, right? And there's, there's reason, there is importance, relevance, but uh, it's not easy. And the names are hard to pronounce. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And the beauty is whatever way you pronounce will be okay because nobody knows the right way to do it. <laughs> right? And I'm turning here because um, for sure we are studying her. But we are studying her life so we can understand who God is. And that's the beauty. Uh, somehow, I do believe that the book of Matthew... It's a very interesting account of the life of Jesus. You see, each one of the books or the Gospels had kind of an intention or a group in mind for, for the, the book to exist. We believe that Mark, the Gospel of Mark, was the first one. He was not so interesting about the birth of Jesus or what happened. Like, he was like... To the point, okay, look, here's the meaning of Jesus. A lot of people that knew Jesus was dying, he, so he felt compelled that he, sh he, sh he should put together this thought of who was Jesus so people could have a, a, a proper record of who was Jesus. Then comes Matthew. Matthew, he had in mind the Jewish people. And he had in mind that the Old Testament talked about a king to come. We usually refer to this king as the Messiah. Christo in Greek, right? Jesus Christ, right? Christ is not a name of Jesus. Christ is a title. A title that means Messiah. So it's the word messiah in greek christ so when we say jesus christ we're not calling him by his name as we are saying jesus is the messiah he is the promised one so what matthew had in mind was yeah the jewish people was waiting for uh, the messiah so let me write a gospel that introduced jesus as the one. That's the reason the book of Matthew has so many uh, connections with the Old Testament. Because Matthew goes back and forth trying to write to the Jewish people. The book of Luke um, was a kind of research. Right? Luke was very educated. He, was, he received a scholarship. And said, your goal on this scholarship is to write an account about Jesus. So he goes, interview people, he kind of make notes, and then he does this compilation. He was not a disciple of Jesus. He did a research about Jesus. And that's the reason this gospel has so many details. Because it's a professor doing a research about someone. And here's the beauty. God blesses even the researchers. And John. John, did you know that the book or the gospel of John probably was the last book of the Bible to be written? We usually think that was Revelation. Right? Probably it was the gospel of John. John was not interesting in... And share the life of Jesus because we had at least three books, right? Telling about the life of Jesus. His main goal was to, to go against a terrible theology that was going around that Jesus was not God. So his book is structured in a way that proves through seven signs that Jesus is God. But let's go back to Matthew. Matthew is trying to prove to the Jewish that Jesus is the king, the king, the promised uh, king from uh, to God's kingdom. 
So that's the reason Matthew presents Jesus as a king. And as a king, he starts his genealogy from Abraham. You see, he has the right genealogy. And he starts, book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And then he starts telling. But what you see here is that in this genealogy, there are five women. If you go to the genealogy of Luke chapter 3, there's no woman there. Just men. And basically all those men are who? Jewish. But somehow, as Matthew was describing that Jesus was the king, he was trying to describe as well what kind of kingdom Jesus had. What are the values of the kingdom? Then we come to Matthew 5, 6, and 7, right? The Beatitudes, the Sermon of the Mountain. What are the values of this kingdom? This kingdom that's different from this orderly kingdom. And we, unfortunately, the husband of the queen of England passed away today. He's not called king because he doesn't come from the right genealogy. So he cannot have the title of king. So he was a duke. However, Jesus came from the right genealogy. However, there's some questions about his genealogy because Matthew decided to share five women in this genealogy. And I do believe that presents what God's kingdom is all about. What's the first woman here? Do you know? Can you grasp there? Bathsheba. No, that's not the first one. Wow. No. Tamar. Ruth. Tamar. Ruth. Tamar. I don't, Tamar. I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce Tamar. Yeah. And who was that lady, Tamar? Tamar. Tamar. Who's that lady? She was a uh, sister uh, was... of Judah, right? It is a woman. A woman that had a, had son from his his, his father-in-law. That's right. Father-in-law. Right. If you remember, if you go back there to the patriarchs, right? At the time, if someone passed away, uh, the woman was supposed to marry the second son, and. The second, the firstborn of this woman now carried the first, the name of the first husband, the right, the diseased husband. So they they can continue, and there's a a situation there. I think it's Genesis chapter thirty nine. She is not. She doesn't receive her right, so she makes a plan, and she got pregnant by her father in law. Ooh, what a great woman. Yeah, that's the woman that I want to have on my genealogy, that I want to highlight. I want to prove that Jesus is the king. Here, Tamar was her, his grandmother. Wow. What's the second woman here? Ruth. Well, I think the second Ruth Rahab. Yes, we come to him. Rahab. Who's Rahab? Scarlet. Yeah. She did something good. But let me ask you, how many things, how many people had done something good? Right? Uh. You know, it's throwing me off with the spelling of these names. <laughs> Tell me about it. Then we come to the third one. Ruth. Ruth was a saint. 
I tell you, she was a saint. However, she was from which country? She was Moabite. <gasps> okay. And there was a law that nobody until I don't know how many generations could enter the Israel people. That's right. Do you recall what, how the Moabites came to be? Another rumor or story about Lot. Do you remember Lot's daughter? He had two daughters that escaped from the destruction. What they did, they had a great idea. Let's get our father drunk. Let's sleep with him. Let's get pregnant with our father. And the Moabites came from that relationship. Wow, that is a great thing for you to have on your resume. Is that right? Well, I want to show off. So let me tell you who, where I came from. Well, there's Tamar. There's Rahab. There is Ruth. What's the next one? And I heard her name before. I think it was even the first time. The first name to be mentioned. Bathsheba. <laughs> It's interesting that her name even does, does not appear on the list, right? Maybe your version of the Bible, right? More contemporary, put it that. But here, Matthew is kind of upset or even shame of mention her name that in verse uh, seven here, or six better saying, right? I'm reading from the New King James Version. And just begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Like, he's so ashamed about this woman that he decided not even mention the name of her name. Right? Hey, you know that usually, and it is very sad, right? But it usually when there is a problem in family and someone maybe are unfaithful to their relationship, unfortunately, our society sometimes blame the woman, right? And somehow they did that. Yeah, it was Bathsheba the responsible for our king to do something wrong? So that's the fourth woman. And the last one is Mary. A saint, a little girl, probably between their, her 13 to 15 years old, but will get a terrible reputation. Right? E even in the Gospels, we see that situation that People come to Jesus and say, at least we know who our father is. Right? Uh, there was a legend of the Roman army around Nazareth and the places of Galilee at the time of Jesus. And the historical accounts mention that a lot of girls were sexual abuse by the Roman soldiers. And many of them got pregnant. Guess what? They th thought that even Jesus was a result of this, this situation. So I, I come, I, I'm coming to an end here. But you see, <laughs> Matthew could include many women like Sarah and many others that were so high praised with great reputation. But somehow, as he described 
Jesus as king. And the king of God, he picks and chooses five women. That maybe will not make your resume. Or you will not highlight or try to hide that information. Why? Why he chose that? And here comes uh, my conclusion, my thoughts. The kingdom of God is different from the kingdom of man. The kingdom of man praises how much you have in your account, in your bank account. The kingdom of man highlights your degree. The kingdom of man highlights who you know or what's your last name. Those are the things. What's the color of your skin? What's your gender? But the kingdom of God is an inclusive kingdom. Where the worst sinners are welcome. Where those that were not recognized like the woman at the time made the least. The kingdom of God. And the King Jesus is a loving King that accepts anyone that is willing to surrender to Him. So, if I go back to my first question, why He had made the list? Yes, she made the proper decision. But nothing can compare to the kingdom of God. She made the list because of God, who God is and what his kingdom is all about. And you and I can make the list. Be one of the heroes of faith because not what you have, but because who God is. It's not about you. Is about God. And I praise God for that. Because it was about me. I was lost. Is what Martin Luther said. When I look at myself. I don't know how can I be saved. But. When I look at Jesus. I wonder. How can I be lost? So Jesus was saying in many different aspects through Matthew here, there are no Gentiles or Jewish. There is no woman or man. Slave or free man, we are one. In Christ. There's no gender, social class, or even status or ethnicity. In Christ, we are one. We are welcomed and loved. So the gallery of faith is not about the people. It is about who God is. And pray for you and with you. Heavenly Father, thanks so much for your blessings. Thank you for the kingdom of God. It is so powerful. It is so deep. How Jesus changed the world. And if he had made it, we can make. Not because of her sin, but because the loving God that you are. So Lord, accept us and help us to rest in you. Only in you. 
Give us a great Sabbath. Surround us with your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Douglas. We hold on, you all. We are not finished yet. I'm going to share my screen. We have a special part uh, for now. Um, thank you very much for your message. It's a very, really inspiring. Now we're going to sing, and this time the song will work. With God's help. Uh, it's a very beautiful song. It's a new, even for me, for many of us. Uh, it's a very beautiful, inspiring uh, song with lyrics that will make you um, complete with the message that Pastor uh, just shared with us. So I ask you all to mute the microphones while, while we are singing.
And the church says, hey, said, amen. Can you hear me, guys? Oops. Yes, um, yes, we can. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I thought was oh, every everyone is uh, gone. <laughs> okay, uh, that's that's what we have for now. Stay uh, with us for next week. We have uh, Bi Bible teacher Jobson Santos from North Carolina College. Um, he's going to share with us about the hero Jacob. What? We can learn about this guy, important lessons for each one of us uh, wrestling, that we rest, wrestling against God. Uh, even we are saved in, uh, by grace, even within the church, even working for the gospel, and sometimes we still find ourselves wrestling again with God. And so next week, invite your friends. Uh, we'll be in the same time. This is our Zoom meeting, and uh, we'll be in April 16, 16 uh, next Friday. And that is, I uh, would like to uh, give you a great happy Sabbath. The pastor already pray, prayed for us. And I'd like to now open the, the time to you if you want to stay and to, and to have a small talk with each other. Now is the time. God bless my friends. Now, now, now our meeting is over. God bless you. Sabbath. Thank you, Pastor Douglas. Hi, guys. Thank, Thank you very... so much, Pastor. Thank, Thank you for, for having our schedule. A little time for us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I know that you are really busy, but you have time to stay with us, and the message was amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks. Praise God. Good to see many of you.